It was 1975 and Muhammad Ali was living through one of his most challenging years personally, yet beneficial professionally. After securing a couple of important victories in the ring, Ali had to face a true rival, one who made him think twice about every move on the canvas, Ron Lyle. It had only been four years since Lyle made his professional boxing debut on April 23, 1971, marking his first victory by technical knockout over Grapes AJ in the second round of a scheduled six-round fight. Since then, Lyle had proven his worth by stepping into the ring repeatedly and maintaining an undefeated record until February 9, 1973, when he was defeated by Jerry Quarry by unanimous decision after 12 grueling rounds. This brief setback meant nothing to Lyle who quickly bounced back and seemed to steer his career towards success and glory. Until just one fight before facing Ali. On February 11, 1975, at the Honolulu International Center, Jimmy Young dealt him another harsh dose of reality, defeating him by unanimous decision after 10 scheduled rounds. Trying to save, except he's not using any for his own right lead to the head. This probably wasn't the best prelude to what came next, a challenge that only a true warrior would be capable of facing. On May 16, 1975, Lyle agreed to step into the ring against Muhammad Ali and fight until one of them was truly unable to continue. The fight took place at the Las Vegas Convention Center, Nevada. The judges were John Mangriziana, Art Lurie, and Bill Kipp. It was Ali's second defense of his World Boxing Association and World Boxing Council heavyweight titles. Since the fight was officially announced on April 4th, many fans eagerly awaited this historic moment. A great uproar shook the world when it was revealed that it would be a 15-round bout. Truly, it was a showdown where you had to kill or be killed. With all the arrangements in place and Fred Hernandez as the third man in the ring, this dramatic moment in boxing history took place. First round. Lyle leaped from his corner with the aggressive attitude that characterized him at the time, driving Ali back against the ropes. With his defense high, Ali shielded himself from the early attacks of his challenger. When Lyle's momentum began to slow, Ali allowed himself to throw a couple of punches at his opponent. Still, during this first round, he seemed more interested in understanding the fighting style Lyle would adopt against him. Therefore, he took a mostly defensive stance. Did a Bill Lyle into a great fight. His principal victories have been over the likes of... He is slow. Second round. Without haste, but also without delay, Ali began to engage in the tit-for-tat that Lyle sought. Ali's left hand started to probe Lyle's guard, who continued to push him back against the ropes. The first clinches occurred, but they didn't disrupt the pace of the fight. Ali seemed comfortable against the ropes, often leaning his back on them as if resting against a wall. Even in the center of the ring, Ali demonstrated great resilience, not appearing affected by his challenger's attacks. Dundee tells his fighter the champion. Oh, whole new kind of white trunks of cars. Third round. Both titans clashed at the start of the third round, and almost immediately, Lyle pushed Ali into a neutral corner. So Lyle, by Pacheco's own... When Hernandez created space between them, Lyle's left hand began testing Ali's belts. Ali continued with quality, not quantity, with a firm guard and only letting go of punches that had a high chance of seriously hurting Lyle. With Lyle making an inhuman effort to stay alert even in counterattacks, Ali's stance was slightly superior as he could not be thrown off balance. We have the jail term and all the rest, now he's facing the thing hanging over his head. Oh, Ali Fourth round. Ali knew that a scheduled 15-round fight had a high probability of being extended, so he contrasted his opponent's bursts of energy with great calmness in the ring. The intensity of Lyle's attacks began to wane, raising the question of whether the challenger was tiring before even putting his champion at real risk. For Ali, the time to attack was finally approaching. No more blood. Very little rope activity tonight because of... Fifth round. Lyle started the round by unleashing powerful bombs that exploded on Ali's body. With lateral movements, Ali avoided standing in front of a Lyle who seemed determined to finish everything right then. Ali employed his classic hit-and-run strategy, except he wasn't running away. He cleanly provoked Lyle and then exited, moving with a footwork coordination that is still admirable today. In doing so, Lyle had no choice but to expend much more energy than he would have liked, trying to keep up. This is the with movement, the Sixth round. 
Ali began the sixth round right where he left off in the fifth, dancing in the ring. When he approached, Lyle stepped back. When he moved away, he was completely out of his challenger's reach, a classic Muhammad Ali. Ali showed everyone in the arena that despite having been pushed against the ropes on more than one occasion, he was in control of the fight. Seconds ticked by, and Lyle was unable to land a punch. Instead, Ali stepped in and delivered his punches almost on demand. He looked like a true predator playing with his prey before stopping it permanently. He is staying stay close to him, to Muhammad Ali. Now Ali's in. Tell you this, Ali must not expose the commercial and be back in a moment. Seventh round. Lyle seemed to start keeping up with Ali properly, but it was just an illusion. His body was only close to Ali's powerful left hand, which caused damage every now and then. Noticing his challenger's deficit, Ali paused his movements to exchange punches. During the last minute, while positioned in a corner, one of the highest peaks of the fight occurred. He's not been able to use the rope. Hell will not go in and throw, use himself up. And I think this would really be stretching things. It's been hold up this fight. In the fight. That's it for Al Eighth round. Ali opened the eighth round with a tenacious right hand that recalibrated Lyle's thoughts. Now it was Lyle who was pushed into a corner, and he didn't feel as comfortable. The exchanges of punches were becoming more frequent, and the risk of emerging unscathed from them increased for both. During the last 30 seconds, Ali reminded Lyle why he was the champion by pinning him against the ropes. We're going to run this clock the whole round because of the prediction. Ali. Ninth round. At the start of the round, Lyle cautiously approached and Ali backed up until he leaned against the ropes where he felt secure. Surprisingly, Lyle decided to change his approach and didn't attack him there. Instead, with a gesture, he invited Ali back to the center of the ring. Two gentlemen met that night. Lyle seemed to change his fighting style, leaving uncontrolled aggression behind and becoming a tactical puncher. But, probably, fatigue was already starting to take over. Meanwhile, Ali showed great resilience by not losing focus on his own game for a second. Tenth round. With nearly 20 minutes of fighting ahead, Lyle didn't show his best face. He tried to intimidate Ali by stretching out his left hand, but he continued to fail. In the clinches, Lyle attacked the body, but it seemed he did so with great intent. Against the ropes, Ali still seemed comfortable. His guard remained high and impenetrable. The fighters were barely entering the last third of the fight. It wasn't yet time to bring out the heavy artillery. Even so, probably at this point, no one imagined what awaited them around the corner. In the eighth, no knockdowns, of course. Eleventh round. Lyle's left hand began to test Ali's guard, who returned the favor almost instantly. Now it was Lyle who moved around the ring, making it clear he didn't want to stay in front of the champion. Lyle, like a mirror, tried to reflect the fighting style Ali had emulated so well a few rounds earlier. But quickly, Ali's right hand sent him crashing directly into the ropes. This was Ali's art, and he knew how to capitalize on it. Once there, an infamous barrage of punches was sent to Lyle's unguarded body. Lyle covered up, but his posture showed that he was being hurt. Ali's left hand slammed into him until Muhammad himself felt pity. Lyle wasn't responding, so Ali took two steps back to let him breathe. Still, Lyle didn't respond. Ali continued to pummel Lyle's body as if he were a punching bag. Lyle tried to escape to the side, but was unsuccessful. He just danced around the ring to the rhythm of the champion's fists. Supported in a corner, Lyle absorbed every punch from Ali as if he were destined to do so. Then, Fred Hernandez, the referee, in an act of mercy, intervened. The fight was stopped. Muhammad Ali retained his titles. And, unexpectedly, the man who had fought to be the aggressor throughout the contest was tamed with just over four rounds remaining. If you've made it this far, thank you. Remember that the best way to support my content is by leaving a like on the video. Do you think Ron Lyle really had any chance of beating Muhammad Ali in this fight? Or was Ali just playing with his prey before devouring it? I'll read your thoughts in the comments.